Well, I started to pop these up and decided to get my camera because these look so good. These are hardy kiwi, female. Uh, not sure of the variety because I've got uh, two different plantings that I've taken cuttings from. One of them I got at Sam's. It was a cardif cardifolia, and I'm not pronouncing that correctly probably. And uh, another one I got from a local nursery that just said female kiwi. So they were either Isai probably or Cardifolia or something. Uh, kiwi have been, for me, difficult to propagate. Uh, they just, um, they have, have had some issues with them. They just did not want to uh, propagate well. But as you can see, I, I did a mass planting like I've told you before. A mass planting of my cuttings in, uh, in this oh, probably 12 inch uh, pot here. And I stuck about uh, oh, 10, 12, 15 of them maybe in here. I put dip and grow, rooting hormone, uh, dipped them in dip and grow solution, and then I just stuck them in the, uh, in this, trying to gently break it loose here, in this um, pot. And, um, and it has done well. That one rooted from at least two different nodes. And then it rooted right there, and it rooted right there. And this big one is kind of intertwined with it. There they go, separate. Uh, at least two different nodes there. This big one, only one node at the bottom. But notice that root ball, wow. This is probably done about four months ago, probably February. Uh, March, April, May, June, July, about four months ago, three and a half, four months ago, I put it under my misting system uh, in the shade, partial shade, partial sun. Morning they get sun, afternoon they're completely shaded, and good gracious. And that was a, that was a big cutting, pencil sized. That one is just a skinny little old boy, girl, excuse me. And, um, and then some of them didn't make it, you know, some of them didn't do anything. But uh, out of this planting of 15, I see maybe three that didn't make it. The rest of them have done well. This one is, wow, that's good. It's rooted from three different nodes from here, from here, from here, and maybe even in there too. So there's probably four different nodes. It's going to be a great root system. So I want to show you these, uh, show these to you. I'm gonna, I've got some pots. That's probably a half gallon. I fill them with my potting soil. Several have asked me about my potting soil, what I use. It's called 3B Mix. It's by a company called Fafard, F-A-F-A-R-D. And a uh, big bag, I buy the big bags. It's about 11, 12, maybe up to $13 now. But it's a big, big bag, and uh, let me start potting these up. I'll show you that. I hope you can hear me over the Katie dids, cicadas. Um, basically, I get a little potting mix, empty pot, put that little jewel in there. Got about, like again, three or four places where it's rooted. I want to plant it about as deep as it was in the original pot. Probably could go deeper on these. And then, uh, man, that's it. Uh, water it well. Keep it watered. Keep it misted. Uh, but man, these are going to be nice. Uh, let's see if I can separate some more of these without tearing the roots too bad. Just bounce it around a little bit. They'll come apart. You're not going to hurt it. Well, that one's only got one place where it's rooted. Unless I maybe pull, I could have pulled a little root, rootage there. That's going to be a good cutting, probably. And this one, see, I can feel the roots ripping a little bit, so I got to be a little bit more gentle, maybe. Seems like to me, it looks like these smaller cuttings, the ones that are pencil size, did not root as well as the ones that are pencil lead size. That's uh, rooted there, and there, and there, three places. Put this one aside and start another one. Again, nice, nice root system on that one. 
I'll go down pretty low. I put a little potting soil in the bottom of the pot simply because I don't want the root sitting on those holes that's in the bottom of this. And I'll try to stand him up in the middle, stand her up, these are female, stand her up in the middle the best I can and um, up tall. Stand up straight. Come on baby, stand up straight. My daddy used to tell me, straighten up and fly right. I never knew what that meant, but I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> in the middle of the pot, all around it, back her down a little bit. Done. Shoot. These will sell. These are pretty expensive. These are hardy kiwi. Not easy to find. Good root system. Bang. I mean, that is good. Um, hardy kiwi are... Uh, not as easy to find because they're just not something that everybody grows. But they will grow just about anywhere. The hardy ones will. The fuzzy ones won't. The hardy ones will. They, uh, they call them hardy because they can handle the cold temperatures. There's even one that's, uh, I think it's called an arctic something. Arctic kiwi. And it'll handle, I mean, Canada. It, it'll handle Real cold stuff. Again, try to break these loose just gently. Bounce them a little bit. Bounce, bounce the dirt off of them that's packed around it. And they'll, they'll come out. They'll eventually come out. These are really intertwined. <laughs> Maybe I put these a little too close together. But I was trying to get 15 of them in a about a 12 inch, 10 inch, 12 inch pot. Come on. Just like a bunch of ladies just gathered together, won't turn loose of each other. No dirt left on it, but they lots of roots. Look at that. Oh, those are nice. I think that is the best kiwi I have ever rooted. Um, I really do believe. I can't remember having a root system like that on any of my kiwi cuttings, so I'm excited about this. Dirt, potting soil in there. You get the idea. So, don't be afraid to root stuff, root your cuttings. Man, that looks nice. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. That is going to make a, take off. I've got to root some males now. The Isai, if I understand right, the, if these are Isai, I'm not sure. It just said female kiwi. Isai is the, if I understand right, if I remember reading right, is the only kiwi, female kiwi, that will produce without a male. It will produce on its own, self-pollinating. It does better with the male. And uh, I do have some males. Uh, I've got one in pot, I think one or two in pots, and then... Uh, I've got a bunch of them planted out in the uh, orchard that I will be propagating this fall. And uh, so I can have some males to go with the females. You know, I know you ladies don't like to admit it, but you need a, you need a male around. <laughs> Every now and then. Alright. Uh, again, water them in good. Keep them watered. Keep them misted. The tops of these plants. But the tops of these love to be misted. That that is especially in the summertime. That is key. Uh, it is getting hot. It's gonna be 95 in the next couple of days. That's 92 today probably. Uh, again, these are in the shade, in the afternoon shade when it's really hot. In the morning sun, and uh, from about 12 on, they are in the shade. And um, so. Don't forget, I mean, don't uh, hesitate to propagate things. These will sell for, I don't know, six, eight, ten, twelve bucks. Don't know. Twelve, fifteen bucks. Again, kiwi's a little harder to find than grapes and blackberries and stuff. I get six for my blackberries, but uh, who knows what you can get for that. That is a hearty kiwi. And I'm going to have some for sale. Some of you folks that live near that have come to see me before, maybe bought some blackberry plants and stuff, going to have some hearty kiwi. Come back. Come back to see me.
here's my second pot. I'll show you how I just kind of dump them out. Not really dump them out, but try to catch them before they fall out. And just stand it up as a whole pot. I like that. Then start shake and bake. Shake it. Try to get her loose. Get away from the other women. And again, you're going to hear little roots tearing. Just try to be as careful as you possibly can. I just can't believe those are some great roots. Look at that. Man. I say I can't believe. I don't know why. I'm getting pretty good at this. But Kiwi has been my Achilles heel. Kiwi has been difficult for me. And these grapes are easy. Blackberries are easy. Be sure and watch my grape and blackberry videos. I've got a playlist called Propagation or Propagating. Oh, that's good. Man, look at that. It's not very big, you know. But it's got a heck of a root system. Again, most of these, the smaller ones, smaller little twigs, are the ones that uh, that made the best root system. So a uh, few of them didn't make it, but there's one, two, maybe three. I think I pulled one out four, five. Five out of about 15. Shoot, I'll take those odds anytime. I'd go to Vegas with that, and I don't even want to go to Vegas. Shake them loose. You're just shaking the dirt out of it. Once the dirt gets away from it, then they start pulling away much easier. So there they are. I'll pop these up and show you what I got when so I got them they are up. all potted up. I uh, <clears throat> watered each pot individually with a water hose. Uh, I like to water them until I see water coming out the bottoms. That way you know it's gone all the way through. You're putting a root, um, a cutting with the, the roots in soil that is uh, by and large um, dry and they have, they're have they used to wet. So <clears throat> I would, uh, to save as much shock as you can, you want to put them in, uh, you want to get some water on them as quickly as possible. In fact, I did half of them. I watered them and did the other half. Uh, but I think there's 27 here out of uh, two pots, about 12 inch pots that I just stuck a bunch of cuttings. I've shown you how to, how to do the cuttings before on other things. No difference here. You just gotta know which end is down. When the stem was coming up out of the plant, I cut that typically at an angle so I'll know that goes in the ground. A sharp end goes in the ground because you, you can't plant one upside down, in other words. so. As long as you know uh, how to do that, use some uh, rooting hormones such as Dip and Grow. And uh, I'll put a link down uh, to Dip and Grow down in the below the video. Uh, but this 27 of them I think I counted. And if, uh, you know, assuming I get 10 bucks a piece, because these should be more expensive than blackberries, uh, that's 270 bucks. It took me probably less than an hour. Um, all total, maybe an hour and 30 minutes, uh, putting them. Uh, you know, dipping them in the dip and grow and putting them into pots a few months ago. And this time took about an hour. That's, uh, let's say two hours at $270. That's close to what I'm worth. <laughs> 130 bucks an hour. I'll take that. I ain't even a lawyer or a plumber. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, propagating is so easy. Um, you know, you'll need to check on patent things. And like I say, I'm not sure what these are because the, uh, I've, I've got two different kinds out there and I don't know where these cuttings necessarily came from. And the nursery I got the cuttings from just said female. They did not, uh, and it could be because he had some issues with, uh, didn't want to say what they were because they're patented. I don't know, but I bought them from him. They said female. I propagated them. So here they are. They're probably car cardifolia they're, or, or isai or something. Don't know what they are, but uh, they're female. Uh, he assured me they were female because I told him I did not need no more males. 
and uh, he assured me they were female so uh, that was about two years ago and I have grown uh, some since then and uh, these are the cuttings that I took uh, in February from those and uh, gonna make me some nice plants to sell okay probably won't keep these I got plenty of kiwis planted probably won't keep these if you're in Texas if you're in a uh, hot humid baking environment I would suggest just from my own personal experience I would suggest partial shade for hardy kiwi uh, Texas heat is tough on these babies it's uh, you know I, I put some shade cloth over some and I've, I've saved some uh, several plants with some shade cloth but I don't know if I'd have saved them if I hadn't put the shade cloth on them so until they get to be adults um, got a good root system it's tough it's tough to, to uh, to get these going so uh, these should stay in the pot at least till fall and uh, if not uh, all the way through the winter before somebody puts them in the ground that's just what I would do uh, just simply that my again just strictly my experience with the hardy kiwi uh, and in Texas I would plant them somewhere maybe on a the east side of the house where they get um, good morning sun uh, maybe a trellis or uh, by a tree that the tree's going to shade them in the western uh, 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 from the western sun, uh, the afternoon sun, hot part of the day. Uh, that's about all I know about hardy kiwi. But uh, man, there's there's some money there. Just a couple hours time, you can do it. There's they will go now in my misting bed. I've shown you my misting bed before. And I've got it full of blackberries and grapes and stuff, and now we'll have the kiwi in it. Okay? That's where they were anyway, in the in the big pots, but now they'll go in the individual pots. I'll mark them as female kiwi. Uh, I'll just use a white, what I like to do is use a white paint pen. You can see that T on that one over there. And I will just put an F on there. I'll put a kiwi with an F. So, that's about it. Let me just let you go and... Do some cuttings. It's too easy. Too easy. Money's uh, the money's there to do this. A backyard uh, nursery type business of some sort. Uh, I specialize in things you can eat, but you can certainly do ornamentals. That's probably a bigger market than eating stuff. Uh, anyway, this is it. We're gone. Hardy Kiwi.